Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, no, this is not a duplicate of last episode. This is the exact same vehicle we flew up last episode. <laughs> this is a RA9S, capped with a Bellarati Keyhole mapping satellite. And now I actually do have a contract to do a high-resolution scan of dogs barking in the background. Earth. <laughs> okay. Nope. Dog still ain't done. So we'll just drown it out with engine noise. How does that sound? Excellent. So, much different flight plan for this one in that it is going into a polar Earth orbit and you'll get to see what this vehicle is actually intended to do. Now, being that I don't want to have you watch the exact same episode, two episodes in a row, I'm going to speed most of this up and we'll get to a few other uh, mission related things uh, after we've got this one successfully placed in orbit. All right, well, that was uh, a little better than I expected it to be in that our apogee is now 10 million meters, which will require some adjusting down, obviously, because that is out of the range of the scanner, which I think has a maximum of about uh, eight and a half, well, between seven and a half and eight and a half million. So, but what we're going to do first is uh, adjust our perigee because we have way more fuel than could ever be needed. <laughs> We've got another 3.8 kilometers per second in our transfer stage here. So we want to set that right to about 7 something. I don't know why I'm boring you guys with this, these details. You really don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah. 7.4, we'll go with that. All right. All right, that's a good shutdown. The periaps is 7.4. So then we'll just go around here to the periapsis and try to adjust our apogee down. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. 7.48 by 7.40. We'll call that a win. Just to double check, suboptimal. Well, whatever, I didn't need your input anyway. <laughs> anyway, the next bit of this is to decouple the probe, hit return to our transfer stage, which uh, we should maneuver lower than the probe itself, just to make sure we're not going to hit it. But we'll just angle away, and light that engine again. Phew. Goodbye. All right, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's just double check in on our probe itself, make sure we're getting good map data. Oh, not set as target, switch to my bad, my B. I enjoy it. All right. <laughs> anyway, make sure we're collecting good map data. That was from our moon launch. And that was from our telemetry up, from when we turned it on, crossed the North Pole, and then swept back down, and then went out of range, and then came back in range. You. <laughs> All right. 
We are, in fact, getting good data. I don't know why time warp has slowed down. I can only imagine there's going to be a uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock warning. Oh yes, we are reconditioning the pad from this very launch. How nice. Alright, we don't need to watch this. What we do need to do is jump over to our Mars map set. I know, so many map sets. And uh, get ready for orbital insertion. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We have, uh, through the magic of editing, worked forward about a month or so and uh, found our Mars mapper is about to... Uh, well, has made <laughs> the successful transfer to Mars. It is on course. Things are going quite well. I need to unlock these tanks so that I can get ourselves pointed at the node. And then uh, we're going to give flight computers um, instructions. Uh, I was also informed that uh, on the way over here, the contract to do a low resolution scan of Mars has expired. So we are literally two days too late to start our mapping process and probably less than a week total off of being able to complete that contract. That makes me pretty mad. <laughs> So we are now doing this entirely for free. Now, we do have a drain on our electric charge. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, although I can uh, shut down these avionics. I do also need to toggle SAS on. Tell this to hold at the node. Make sure our engine is active. It is. Three remaining ignitions, uh, one to put us in orbit, one to probably circularize our orbit, and that will leave one left to deorbit the base stage. But, oh, we have some science that we can do. Log data. We haven't gotten any of this stuff yet, have we? I forgot that this is a reused transfer stage from a different spacecraft. <laughs> it was not supposed to have these things on it. This is one of these sole priority things. All right, and then we'll tell it to execute next node. Execute plan maneuver. Hold maneuver prograde, okay. So let's time warp. We're gonna have to ullage the engine ourselves though, which is why I'm glad I still have access to the RCS thrusters, even though I'm not supposed to. All right. Signal delay. Don't know what that was for, but all right. Okay. Mm, here comes hold maneuver pro grade. Oh, flight computer, you are terrible at your job. We'll just use Time Warp to help you. Ah, okay. Come on. Oh, I guess we do have magnetometer data from here. Never mind. My bad. So now we just basically got two days of time warping to do. We should be pointing... There's Mars. Let's tuck flight computer away. We don't need him just yet. Watch this rolling approach. Oh, cool. Too bad the spacecraft is ugly as sin. Wow. Okay, that was weird. But I can only assume that was environmental visual enhancements doing something, because now it looks like there's actual, actually an atmosphere. All right, got to be really careful with this node thing, because if I'm not here to ullage the engines, we're going to waste an ignition, and that's a problem. Ah, I need to tell our scanner to turn on, but it won't let me click on it. Uh, 
won't let me click on it in time warp anyway. All right, we'll figure that out in a second. Okay, engine is lit. We are not doing very much better about holding our attitude, but all right, we're here. We've, we're actually gonna put something, oh God, how much Delta V do we have? None? That's very interesting. That's very, very interesting. <laughs> oh no, really? Really, Mechjeb, now? I guess the shutdown avionics command never went through. That's very interesting. Hmm. Oh, cool. That's a neat glow. We'll probably wait to take the picture until after we're in orbit. But in the meantime, long burns means time warp. Um, what? Our node has gone crazy. Shit. And it's gonna take 15 minutes to do that. Can we... No, but we can lock the tanks. Oh, no. Tell me that killed. Tell me that just tried to restart it. No ignitions. Frack. Right, yeah, canceling a command. <laughs> We're not going to turn anything else on until we've got that done. Flight computer, you have screwed me again. Yeah, we can probably just get rid of you. Not going to unlock any more fuel. We have to correct this apogee down. We really need to get this above 300 if we want to get uh, anything meaningful accomplished. Wow, okay. The good news is, is we're not going to re-enter the atmosphere. So I'm just going to set myself up a node. Correct that to below 500. All right, 443. We can be able to make that work, and we've still got fuel in the probe. We're just going to absolutely wait to do anything with it. Okay, we do have near Mars space from magnetometer. All right, good. Okay, that's interesting. Canceling a command, canceling a command. What are we doing here? It's on deck flight computer. I've told you to cancel that like four times, so goodbye. So we'll just go ahead and, wow, we should, wait. We do have, yes, long range comms on this one. <laughs> They're just tucked in there, all awkward like Earth. Good, good, good. So then, yes. <sighs> D 
couple. Oh no. Awesome. We have a satellite that is paralyzed by instability. This should be fun. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh no. Let's see what happens if we... Oh, I can't unlock these fuel tanks? I have a connection, why not? <laughs> this should be fun. Oh, <laughs> great. So there's something messing with the collisions. It's probably the solar panels and the probe core in that uh, we're not going to be able to stabilize this anytime soon. So let's check the mapping data and see if we're getting clean sweeps all the way across. Almost. Well, it's going to take a little longer than normal, and it's not like we have a contract for it anyway, but we will eventually get full mapping data from Mars. <laughs> Despite our super spinny, not very much fun satellite, and now we know. This thing is inherently ridiculous and unstable, and we should not be using this design anymore. But the good news here is, is that it looks really nice when it's in time warp. And we can do cool things like this, or any of these angles look pretty, pretty damn good, honestly. Like, yes. Awesome. Ugh. Another partial success. We will eventually get our map data, but we're not going to get paid for it. And that makes me quite sad. But uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed our copious mapping of things this episode <laughs> and last episode. And we'll try to get on to doing some newer, different, or cooler stuff uh, tomorrow. So until then, thanks for hanging out, everybody. See you later.